So we were sitting there, and then this bear came in, and I was like so excited because I've never really been put in that position before. So he came in, and he was looking up at me, and I was playing alpha dog and staring back at it. It was able to roll the drum behind the tree, so I had to take my shot. Hi there folks, I'm Erica Marshaw and uh, according to this hospital bracelet here, I was just diagnosed with strep throat today. We're leaving for the bear hunt in four days, so we're getting in our last little bit of practice. 2010's the year, we're gonna bag a bear this year and it's gonna be a monster. Erica, she's our humorous, fidgety one. Uh, she's learning. My sister is enthusiastic and pretty upbeat about things and she always provides entertainment no matter where we go. She is way too much like her dad, uh, to a fault. I uh, screw up a lot, and I've learned to just take it with a grain of salt and just laugh, and there's nothing you can do about it. You know, it happens. I think the very first thing that Erica packed this year was her outdoors card. She uh, was not going to have the uh, unfortunate incident of the year before, so she made sure that that was the first thing that she was packed. Let's head her out. Uh, Louise and I were going up in the truck. We had all her gear, all the girls' gear and everything else. We were pretty loaded up. Here we are, on our way out of the county, up to get the bears. Let's see how our driver's doing. Oh, he looks good. Always look good. Always. Not sure about that. I really like driving for about an hour. <laughs> Rick has this uncanny habit of, I'm gonna drive, I'm gonna drive, and then an hour later, can you drive? It's a long drive, it's getting longer every year, and uh, you can't travel 12 hours and not expect to hit some sort of construction, and it just makes a long trip longer. We enjoy our time up there, we stay with uh, Rick's brother and sister-in-law, who are really, really great people, and the nephews and the great nephews and wives are there, and it's awesome. My first hunt the year before was successful, and I know that I kind of got off lucky going hunting for the first time and being able to come back with a kill. This year, I practiced extra hard knowing that I was going to be on the stand. So we practiced in the backyard, we practiced at the club, we practiced at John's out of his tree stand to feel comfortable shooting like that. You get what you put into it, and I've been putting so much into it and getting nothing. Being from a hunting family seems so normal to me, but when you say it to other people, it just seems so bizarre and different and almost from a different time. The main reason that we hunt is to put meat in our freezer. That's the main reason. Uh, with all the big push on for organic now, I always tell people, well, we're eating the most organic animals you could have. And they're like, what do you mean? I said, well, a deer, a moose, a bear, grouse. Like how much more organic can you get? Something that I've gained is like a different outlook on life. So even when I was younger and the kids would come up to me and say, your dad killed Bambi. I would say yeah, and her mom tasted great. I also think that they assume that most hunters are out for the trophy. When they ask, oh, what do you do with the bear after? And I say, well, we eat it. They're always so surprised that that's what we do. But that's what a lot of hunters do, and I just don't think people are really aware of it. 
all these kids look at the hunter as this like evil human being when I look at it as, yeah, but that hunter has a family. And this brings us together as a family and we have to work as a team. Sometimes parts of the team get impatient with others, but it's all a learning experience. And the older the, the, the kids get, the tighter, I don't know, the tighter the whole bond is. We're on a new bait and there's a lot of bears and they're fairly big, whereas Dad and Kelly's bait doesn't really have so much action. So I was really excited about that because I mean, that's gotta up my odds, right? The bait that we had, that Kelly and I had, had a sow and two cubs on it. And we've seen that on the trail cam pictures. So we asked the girls which bait they would prefer. And uh, they really, really did not wanna have to come up to a sow and two cubs. So they decided to take this new bait. We ended up calling it the scary bait because there were such big bears on there. And the one day when we were up there, we were watching a TV show and Jim Shockey was on it. The girls in our household love Jim Shockey. And uh, on one of his episodes, he said, it's not an adventure unless there's an element of danger. And uh, that was their bait. We started calling it the Jim Shockey bait. First time ever into this bait. It's a brand new bait. Looks like it's crazy active. There's a trail here. One back there. A real well-worn trail there. Looks like you're just coming in from everywhere. I think Louise and Erica are gonna be using this bait. Definitely more trails coming into this bait. Whether it's more active or not, that's yet to be determined. Nice spot though. They might have a bit of an issue in the evening with their peep. Peep site is, uh, it's an aperture that you put inside your string. So when you draw your compound bow back, that aperture lines up with the iris of your eye, and it's a rear sight. Uh, gives it a little more accuracy. Uh, the problem with them is the smaller the aperture is, obviously the less light that is allowed into that. So if you're losing light because of natural causes, trees, shadows, and whatnot, you lose that much more light when you're trying to look through this, this peep sight. For us, with being sight shooters, we need a little bit more daylight for when we're ready to shoot if it's at night because we need the light to come onto our site. It had an ominous appearance to it as it was. Uh, we cleared it out as best we could to give them the optimum light that we could gain in that situation. But it was still, it was a darker bait. It was uh, because of the trees around it. It was all conifers and whatnot. Weather wasn't the greatest. You know, it wasn't bad, but it was miserable. The first two days were a little bit damp. But then it got cleared up, it was a little bit cool, but it warmed up by the end of the week and was much more enjoyable. The season just closed, and now you want to go out and do your early season scouting for next year. All the trails are highly visible in the bush. They're going to be using these trails again next year in the late season. Don't pass up an opportunity like this. Be out in the bush now. I'm Rick Marchand. That's your tip of the week. My sister and my mom are still chicken about, they're about as scared as I am about bears going in. Because mom and I had never actually physically been there before, dad had to walk us in. And as we were walking in, he said there was a bear on the bait. So I knocked my arrow and was like, is this it? Like, ah, I'm not ready. It was, it was a nice bear. And uh, unfortunately, it, it seen that we were there, it took off. It would have been nice if it came back in, but. It didn't, and that's bear hunting. I've never had that where I walked in and a bear was there, so that kind of got me excited. It's the opening day, and uh, we walked in on a bear on our bait. Hopefully it didn't run away too far and it comes back. We had bears come in the first, first night. Uh, probably had three bears come in the first night. There was a lot of bears, bear activity on that. So we were sitting there and then this bear came in and I was like <laughs> so excited because I've never really been put in that position before. So he came in and he was looking up at me and I was playing alpha dog and staring back at it. And then it started rolling the drum and it was able to roll the drum behind the tree. So I had to take my shot before it could do that. You need to pick a spot. You have to watch the bear. You have to let it settle in and she she washed it for a bit and it settled, but she didn't pick a spot. When you're trying to 
close the deal on your first ever animal. There's so many things running through your mind at that time and so many things that experience has, hasn't taught you that it's gonna be a hit or miss venture. To be completely honest, I just didn't maybe wait for the right shot and I was too excited and you know I didn't wait for everything to fall into place and I ended up just missing the bear just underneath its um, brisket and I was like, <laughs> joke. It ran 10 feet and then came back and started eating on the bait again. So I knocked another arrow and he came back and I was like, okay, okay, redemption, redemption. And then he rolled the barrel behind the tree so I didn't get another shot. He took a baguette and he left. It's a rookie move. It is, you need experience. I have a very long list of learning experiences that I never learned from. And that was just one of them. She was getting to a point where she had been hunting for so long and she finally gets her chance and she she blew it pretty much. I was telling mom, I was like, I'm done. Like, I don't want to do this. Like, it's you. Like, I already had my, my opportunity. Like, I don't want to blow it again. So the ride home, it was like something out of a movie. Everyone's like, come on, Erica, you can do it. You were born to do this. Come on, get back on that horse and ride. That happens once. That's not going to happen again. I'm sure of it with Erica. My sister's been having a pretty rough time hunting. Two days ago, she shot at a bear. Last night she had three bears come in, just didn't have any opportunity to shoot one. Uh, she was getting so frustrated. Last night she didn't want to shoot anymore. She felt like she was a failure. And we just sent her, we made her go out again. <laughs> Do you have videos of your hunt and you'd like to see them right here? Go to our website, justushunting.com, and email me directly. Who knows? Maybe one day you'll see your hunt right here on Just Us Hunting. I remember one time I only had a half a day to get out in the controlled deer hunt. So my uncle, he felt really bad about, you know, me not seeing anything. So he gave me his favorite hunting spot. And I ended up shooting the nice eight-point buck that he had been watching all week long. And it was a memory I'll never forget. Our baits, our barrels, are made to make access to the bait difficult. Because we're so far away, we bait those drums full and we want to restrict the access to it so that it stays in there the longest time. So they have to roll that barrel around. We had to fix up our bait because the first few nights they would come in and then they would roll the barrel behind a tree. So when we went in for our afternoon hunt, we cut a tree and a bunch of branches and put them there so they couldn't roll the barrel behind anymore. And because I use a peep sight, you only have so many hours that you can actually use it because of the light. And so once they would roll that barrel behind there, it makes the light drop so much more with your peep sight. So even if they did offer a shot, you couldn't really take it. We're at my mom and my sister's bait. And we just walked in. And there's a big bear here, and he might still be hanging around, waiting for all of us to leave. And my dad still has to cut down a tree that's in the way of the shooting area. So, I hope it doesn't come back, because I've got a pillow and a bow I can't pull back to defend myself. Erica's learned now that you have to be patient, so we just have to wait till the next one comes in. We fixed the bait, so there's a big tree across there, so they won't be able to roll the barrel back there. So if a bear comes in, it'll be able to stay around front there and hopefully stay broadside. But uh, I'm feeling really good. I'm excited and I hope that something comes in. So we fixed that, got the tree there, and then steak came in. The bears are usually named after one or two days on a stand or after they shot it. The year before, 
I saw a little, I was hunting with my dad and the only bear that came in was a small little like 80 pound bear and he couldn't even like get his arm into the barrel. So I called him stir fry cause he was too small. And then I said the next year stir fry would then be steak. He came in from behind us and he was very cautious coming in, very, very cautious. And he looked up at me and I'm playing alpha dog and then he leaves. He just walked by the bait, that was it. He was gone and I'm choked. I'm like, really? Like he just walked and then I'm just like watching him, like heart breaking. And then he stops, turns around, comes back and I'm like, ah! And all I was thinking was hit the bait, hit the bait, hit the bait, get comfortable, you know, like, it's all on the bear first and then I'll do my part after. So he comes in and he's trying to roll it behind the tree. And then he was just like standing broadside with his arms up on the barrel. And I was like, okay, this is it, this is it. So I like stood up and I just, so it was hit the bait, hit the bait, hit the bait. Pick a spot, pick a spot, pick a spot. It was just like everything falling into place. And I pulled back and I flung that arrow and smoked him. I heard the death moan, which like made me cry even more because it's so like, I knew he was down, I knew I had him. I've been hunting for eight years now. Uh, my weapon of choice is a compound bow. I like to hunt uh, white-tailed deer and uh, I've been blessed enough to take eight, uh, two deers in the last eight years that I've been hunting. Uh, in the off season, I get ready by going to our local archery range and shooting 3D targets. Uh, my son has also taken up hunting recently and he sh comes and shoots with me. Quite often we get out as a family and just walk through the bush, bush and shoot a range uh, around the targets. Uh, as well, the main area where I hunt is a wildlife area and uh, my family and I will go out and walk the bush in the summer and the fall to scout. My dream hunt would be to hunt moose or bear in northern Ontario. Uh, and the person who's influenced me the most in my hunting career is probably Rick. Rick was instrumental in uh, encouraging me to hunt and take up the sport of archery. As well, he was uh, very helpful in helping me find my first bow and my first recurve bow. I'm Dave Pike, and this is my profile. So we go over there and, and the girls are on the ground and Eric is going through the, the, the experience of the night and she's on cloud nine, it's fantastic. She was ecstatic. And she was on her Blackberry right away. Oh my God, I can't believe I did a death mom. Oh my God, I can't believe I should. Oh, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So dad and Kelly come over and we're all excited and dad's like, where did it go? And I'm like, it took off this way. So he's kind of blood trailing and I'm like, <laughs> left at the bay, just so excited. <laughs> and that's the story of my first bear, well, again. let's go and track it. <laughs> we knew that he ran towards the road and we knew he didn't go very far because we heard him fall and we heard him death moan. So dad's like blood trailing and then he's like, oh, I think I see it. And then I just like <laughs> come bursting through and stumbling over everything. So, so excited. I'm so excited. I'm tripping over my own feet. Yeah, I told you. Oh my God. She was ecstatic with her bear. She um, didn't jump on it, but she picked up its head. And then that's when they found out that it had been the one that she grazed. I look. And you can see a small slice right on the brisket. And all it did was cut the hide. Didn't cut fat, didn't cut muscle tissue, absolutely nothing. Just cut the hide. She was that close from making the perfect shot the night before. The best thing about it was it didn't run very far from the tree stand and it had ran pretty close to the road. So we only had to hook up the bike winch to it because it wasn't a 
morbidly obese 700 pound bear. So we just hooked up the bike winch to it and dragged it out to the road. And it was probably one of the easiest bears we've been able to get out. Now steak is legal. There you go. Beautiful bear, Erica. Okay, now we gotta get him in the back. Okay. We get him back and all the Ohio boys are really excited because they were there when I was eight and I had shot my first bear then with a rubber blunt. So they all took their $5 bet, how much it weighed, how much it weighed. Hers weighed 275, I believe. He was bigger than my sister's, which I was happy about because, you know, whatever, she can get the first one, but I'm gonna get the bigger one. She was on cloud nine, man. She was happy, we were all proud. I got a brand new hunting party now and it's the wife and kids. And to see them take it is way more valuable than I, I can ever imagine myself getting excited for. If you have videos of your hunts and would like to see them right here on this show, go to our website, justushunting.com and email me directly. Who knows, maybe one day you'd see your hunt right here on Just Us Hunting. Enough to be free. I just go on.